Nadia, you know how risky it is for us to meet like this. I know, but I had to see the evidence you promised. Did you bring it? Nice disguise. Thanks. The rogue police officer hands Nadia the folder. She opens it eagerly and gasps as she sees the contents, a video and photos of a roughed up Kwaku in prison. Is this, is this Kwaku? Yes, Nadia, this is what they're doing to him in prison. They're teaching him a lesson, just like you wanted. Good, he deserves every bit of it. Good job officer, I can now sleep peacefully at night knowing that I have exacted my revenge on Kwaku. For as long as you keep paying, we'll keep making his life a nightmare in prison. Thanks officer, please thank the prison warden for me. I gotta go, this place gives me the creeps. Drive safely, see you next time. Unbeknownst to Nadia, behind her back, the rogue police officer and the prison warden exchange smirks, amused by her naivety. <laughs> She's so gullible, thinks she's getting her revenge. Yeah, and she's paying us handsomely for it. She should do her dirty work herself. Even if we wanted to teach Kwaku a lesson, we can't. He's changed, seems like he's found religion or something. We don't want to be on the receiving end of God's vengeance. Figures. Well, let's keep milking her for all she's worth. Yeah, yeah. This is a good business actually. For as long as she doesn't have someone on the inside, we can get away with doctoring movie scenes and making it look like it's Kwaku on those photos and videos. Yes, trust me to come up with such a devious plan. They share a laugh as Nadia, now miles away, remains oblivious, lost in her satisfaction at seeing Kwaku suffer. <laughs> We shouldn't laugh so loud. Let's get out of here. No man, this place is still not safe. On the news they spoke about a ceasefire but from the look of things, the rebels aren't backing off anytime soon. Jackie and her family will be moving to Montserrat next year, I think I better make plans to get there before them. A few days later, Nadia sits alone, brooding over her thoughts, a mixture of envy and resentment evident on her face. Suddenly, she picks up her phone and dials Jackie's number. Jackie, thank you for taking my call. How are you, dear? Oh, Nadia, we're doing well, thank you. How about you? Oh, you know, just managing. Listen, Jackie, I was thinking. Yes, Nadia. What is it? Well, I've been considering our situation here in Pontac Malo, and I can't help but feel a bit envious of your family's impending move to Montserrat. Envious? Oh, Nadia, please don't feel that way. We've had our share of struggles here. Yes, but now you have the chance for a fresh start, away from all this chaos. I wish I could do the same. I understand. Nadia, is there anything I can do to help? Actually, Jackie, I've made a decision. I've decided to move to Montserrat before you and your family arrive. Oh, is everything all right? I hope you are aware that it takes at least a year for the papers to be processed. I will take shortcuts sister-in-law. I have a plan. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yes, yes, everything's fine. I just think it's best for me to be far away from Kwaku and all the mess here. I see. Well, Montserrat is a lovely place. I'm sure you'll find peace there. Yes, I believe so too. Oh, and Jackie, I've made up my mind about Kwaku. I don't want him to have any contact with the kids anymore. Nadia, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. It's for the best, and I want to be far away when he gets what's coming to him in prison. Nadia, what do you mean? I know you Nadia, and my suggestion is to steer clear of negative influences in the prison. You never know what repercussions may arise once they're released back into society. Additionally, you'll find yourself indebted to corrupt officials indefinitely. It's impossible to predict what evidence they may be compiling against you. If I were in your shoes, I'd distance myself from such situations. 
If you had chosen to forgive Kwaku and focus on moving forward, you wouldn't even consider seeking retribution in prison and jeopardizing your own freedom. I sincerely hope my concerns are unfounded, Nadia. You aren't contemplating seeking revenge on Kwaku, are you? If that's the case, I urge you to cease these actions before they lead to trouble or the temptation to commit further wrongdoing consumes you. While Kwaku may be serving time for his actions, you could find yourself facing even graver consequences if caution is not exercised. Unforgiveness often leads us down a path of plotting harm against those who have wronged us, ultimately resulting in our own downfall. Do not allow the deceit of the devil to cloud your judgment at this time. Remember, unforgiveness is like a poison that corrodes the soul, allowing darkness to seep in and consume us from within. Scientifically, holding on to resentment triggers stress responses in the body, leading to increased levels of cortisol and adrenaline, which can wreak havoc on our physical and mental health. From a Christian perspective, unforgiveness separates us from God's grace and love, creating a breeding ground for bitterness and hatred to take root. It blinds us to the truth and opens the door for the enemy to manipulate our thoughts and actions, leading us down a path of destruction. In the end, the cost of unforgiveness is far greater than we can imagine, as it not only damages our relationships with others but also robs us of peace, joy, and ultimately, our own salvation. Let it resonate within you. If you withhold forgiveness from others, the same mercy will be withheld from you by the Lord. This truth is reinforced in Matthew 6 14 to 15. Reflect deeply, for it is clear that those who remain unforgiven by the Lord cannot enter the gates of heaven. Understand this unequivocal reality. Without forgiveness and salvation, one cannot inherit the promise of eternal life. Period. Matthew 6 14 to 15 says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Oh, nothing, nothing. I'd never get myself involved with such people. It's just some legal matters. Anyway, I won't keep you any longer. Take care, Jackie. You too, Nadia. Please, if you ever need anything. Nadia abruptly ends the call, clearly evading the conversation about forgiveness. Yet, a resolute determination shines through her expression as she immediately begins strategizing her relocation to Montserrat. A few days later. Eva, it's Nadia. Can you meet me the day after tomorrow at Café Rosa at 10 a.m.? Earlier you mentioned that you will be flying to Pontac Malo from Pallavi tomorrow morning. I would like us to meet, it's urgent. Of course, Nadia, what's going on? Oh, I simply need a trustworthy confidant. I trust that you'll offer support without judgment or lectures, unlike some others. We're kindred spirits, best friends. Looking forward to seeing you soon, my queen. Do you hear the helicopters and the explosions, Eva? We must evacuate immediately. You need to seek shelter while I engage the enemy. It's my responsibility as the commander to ensure your safety and that of other civilians. Commander, please, remain composed. Remember, we are in the tranquil and sovereign nation of Pallavi, not the conflict-ridden Pontac Malo. It's common for jets and helicopters to pass through this region, especially given the affluent residents in these beachfront residences. Furthermore, what you perceive as explosions are merely water balloons and firecrackers. It's all a figment of your imagination. My apologies, my dear, for the unnecessary alarm. You see, my friend Lieutenant Garcia and I found ourselves in a tense situation at the border, leading us to officially resign from the army. However, the wounds and traumas from our time in service linger, making it challenging for us to transition to civilian life. I constantly feel on edge, and the adjustment is proving to be quite difficult. I fear I may never fully overcome the trauma. Darling, always remember that time has a remarkable way of easing our pain and healing our wounds. 
While I've never been a proponent of war, I recognize that at times, it's necessary to uphold justice and secure peace. However, the battles that truly matter are the spiritual ones we face. At this moment, your mind is plagued with fear and trauma, but it's crucial not to let malevolent forces keep you in their grip. I will accompany you to see my pastor for prayer and support. Together, we'll overcome this. Thank you, babe. Based on scientific studies, soldiers often face significant challenges upon leaving the army or after the cessation of war. Statistics from reputable sources indicate that a substantial number of ex-soldiers experience post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, depression, and other mental health issues. However, with proper support and intervention, the majority of veterans successfully reintegrate into society. Research shows that access to mental health services, social support networks, and employment opportunities play crucial roles in facilitating this transition. By addressing the underlying trauma and providing comprehensive support systems, ex-soldiers can effectively overcome the challenges they face and live fulfilling lives as productive members of society. Thank you, Eva. It's reassuring to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Take a deep breath, soldier. In due time, you'll undergo a transformation. I'll guide you as you embark on a new journey. Together, we'll explore opportunities to start a business, and I'll offer my full support every step of the way. Thank you, Eva. I appreciate you. A few days later in Pontac Malolo. Eva, thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to see me. Of course, it's my pleasure. I had already intended to reconnect with you. Ever since we crossed paths at the World Gymnastics Competition a few decades ago, our bond has been unbreakable. Eva, I need to tell you something, but you have to promise to keep it between us. Of course, Nadia. You know I won't breathe a word. I've come to realize that it's a waste of time and money to keep paying people to teach Kwaku a lesson in prison. Instead, I'll only do it once or twice more and then wait until he's released. And then what? You know that I was totally against that idea of yours in the first place. Kwaku is currently serving time for his crimes, what more do you want? I think the justice system is too lenient, they should have given him a life sentence. So, what are you planning to do once he's out of prison? Then, Eva, then we make his life a living hell. Abena and I will ensure he regrets ever crossing us. That's quite the plan, Nadia. Looking at you, one would never think that you are this malicious and vindictive. It's my superpower. But what about getting to Montserrat before Jackie and her family? What's that all about? Oh, I have that covered too. I've decided to use my connections and pay to jump the queue, get our papers processed faster. And how do you plan to afford all this? See those nice luxury cars parked outside? Yes. I'll date powerful and wealthy men here in Pontac Malo and use their money to finance our move. It's the perfect solution. I am now a single woman after all. And I know that I am very beautiful and attractive. What? If I were in your shoes, I'd consider dating and committing to one man. It's far less stressful than juggling multiple relationships, and it reduces the risk of contracting incurable diseases. Moreover, maintaining a monogamous relationship protects your reputation and shields your children, especially your daughter Abena, from exposure to strangers. While what Kwaku did to your daughter was undoubtedly terrible, encountering truly malicious individuals could be even worse. The thought of the evil deeds they're capable of is truly chilling. That's my perspective on the matter. I've lost faith in men. Many of them are either married or have multiple girlfriends. After what Kwaku did to me, that man cheated on me with my house helps and hurt my daughter. Now, I find it hard to trust any man. That's why I prefer to date two or three men simultaneously, always staying one step ahead. I'll end things before they have a chance to hurt me, maintain multiple relationships to level the playing field, and ensure that several men support my lifestyle. It's difficult for me to comprehend the path you've chosen. You risk becoming indistinguishable from those who live on the streets. Don't allow Kwaku's actions to alter your true essence. The individual speaking to me right now doesn't resemble my friend, Nadia. The Nadia I know is a diligent and principled woman who prioritizes her reputation over material gain. She would never resort to manipulation, deceit, or betrayal. It seems that Kwaku's infidelity and the hardships he caused your family have poisoned your heart and mind. 
It's imperative that you shift your mindset before it consumes you. Embrace forgiveness, release the past, and forge ahead, Nadia. It's easy for you to say, given your affluent background and thriving business. However, you'll never truly grasp the complexities of my situation. I've observed that it's often the crafty individuals who excel in life. I implore you to pause and reconsider your choices, returning to the path of righteousness before it's too late. Consider the impact on your children, are these the circumstances you wish to expose them to? I reiterate that by engaging in multiple relationships, you heighten the risk of contracting incurable diseases, forming soul ties that future generations may struggle to break free from, and subjecting your daughter, Abena, to potentially worse experiences than those inflicted by her father. Nadia, I urge you to repent before it's too late. Eva, please refrain from frustrating me further. I had hoped for your support. Nevertheless, I intend to cease dating multiple men once I have accumulated sufficient funds. I am only on the side of the truth. Also, once you start this business of yours, it will become increasingly difficult for you to stop. The malevolent spirits won't let you go so easily. Give serious consideration to the guilt, shame, diseases, and potential harm that you are subjecting yourself and your children to. It's simply not worth it. I am here to assist you in launching a small business, a far more honorable way to live. I'm exhausted from the constant struggle to make ends meet. Marrying for love was a mistake. I see now where it led me. Kwaku's betrayal and the pain inflicted on my child are unforgivable. They say that the best revenge is achieving great success, and I want that scoundrel to emerge from prison only to find me thriving as a millionaire. My friend, if the origin of your wealth is tainted, anything acquired with it is destined to fade. Peace will elude you, and you'll remain vulnerable to the sinister forces that facilitated its acquisition. Pursuing easy money through nefarious means only perpetuates a cycle of darkness. Here, we're talking about getting yourself entangled in the realm of malevolent spirits and wicked mindsets. It's crucial to recognize that we mirror the influences we surround ourselves with, especially those within our inner circle. Lastly, bear in mind that when malevolent forces offer something with one hand, they simultaneously snatch away what's essential to your life, and even your soul, with the other hand. I urge you to seek forgiveness from the Lord and turn away from sin. Thank you for watching this episode of Crossroads Odyssey. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we encourage you to do so now. Subscribing ensures you'll be notified whenever we release new content. Additionally, we'd be grateful if you could like and share our videos. Your support is invaluable to us. Before we conclude, we would like to share the following verses with you. Kindly note that the verses were taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Proverbs 13.20 says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Proverbs 27.17 says, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. If a science 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Acts 3.19 says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Proverbs 22, 8 says, He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. And Romans 6.23 says for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. John 1.9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Ezekiel 18.30 says, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent, and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we conclude this episode, we humbly come before you in prayer. We acknowledge your sovereignty and grace in our lives, and we thank you for the wisdom and guidance imparted to us through your word. Lord, we pray for those who may be struggling with forgiveness, healing, and the challenges of life's trials. Grant them strength and courage to overcome adversity, and may your light illuminate their path as they seek your will. Father, we ask for your divine protection and guidance over our lives, guarding us against the schemes of the enemy and leading us in paths of righteousness. Help us to be discerning in our relationships, surrounding ourselves with those who uplift and encourage us in our faith journey. We pray for forgiveness for our transgressions, knowing that you are faithful and just to forgive us when we confess our sins. Help us to extend that same forgiveness to others, releasing any bitterness or resentment from our hearts. Lord, we lift up those who are in need of healing, both physically and spiritually. May your healing touch be upon them, restoring them to wholeness and renewing their strength. Finally, we ask for your blessings and provision as we continue our journey, trusting in your unfailing love and faithfulness. May we walk in obedience to your word, bringing glory and honor to your name in all that we do. In Jesus' name, we pray, Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.